Hello, I'm Lord Jim's Con, you're watching Year of Issues, a program all about comics. So in today's episode, I thought I'd have a crack at an indie book for once. In today's perpetually offended Tumblr generation, a frequent topic of discussion is representation of the LGBT community in fiction. I'm shelving that discussion for another episode, but I'd like to bring your attention to a gem of a comic that I picked up at a convention a few years ago that is very relevant to said discussion. So I present to you, Spandex, Fast and Hard. Spandex is a 2012 indie comic from UK-based writer and artist Martin Eden. It's a playful and light-hearted story about Spandex, an LGBT superhero team based in Brighton, the gay capital of the UK, and it follows them on their day-to-day -day superhero duties defending the seaside town from threats such as a 50-foot lesbian, pink ninjas, and a supervillain team comprising of lesbians. The team is led by a drag queen named Liberty, who has a suit that provides her with strength and speed, but she also possesses a spider-sense type power called a gaydar. Other characters are Diva, described by the author as a lesbian Wonder Woman, Glitter, a chap with light-based powers, Indigo, a French woman who teleports, Mr. Muscles, a man with super strength, and also the twin brother of teammate Butch, described by the author as a lesbian Luke Cage. And finally, Prowler, a hero with the power to absorb the abilities and skills of any gay person. So as you can probably imagine, this is a superhero tale that isn't typical of what you would find normally these days. I particularly like the art. It's a great homage to the four-colour art of the golden and silver ages of comics. Since the book is light-hearted, the simple pencils and inks fit the tone of the story perfectly. That being said, the story does delve into dramatic territory to break up the light tone, dealing with subjects such as relationship troubles. This might not sound like a lot, but it's a step in the right direction considering how homosexuals are often stereotyped in mainstream media as purely promiscuous and shallow bedhoppers. Speaking of, there are other stereotypes of the LGBT community present in the story, but these are done in a self-deprecating and tongue-in-cheek manner. Relating to the promiscuous stereotype, naturally there's plenty of gags and risque moments as well as a few sex scenes. Superhero comics generally can be viewed as a bit of camp fun, so needless to say that there's plenty of little gags and nods to the genre as a whole. At the same time, I think it's a great credit to the author that he didn't lazily delve into the whole Batman-Robin homoerotic pastiche that's been done to death by pretty much everyone to the point that Frederick Wortham himself would be facepalming in his grave so hard it would cause an earthquake. But I digress. In short, if you're after a bit of light-hearted campy fun with a touch of the dramatic, then I'd recommend you go and check this comic out. It's not hard to find online. More info about the story and the creator is in the description below. Incidentally, Chris interviewed the creator at the Kapow Comic Con back in 2012. You can check it out here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon. And um, I love the way John Byrne um, had all these twists and wasn't afraid to like kill characters, so that's what I do. I just kill all my characters, really. So yeah.